just saw the Flash movie, that intro was terrible. But going into this film, I had, was a bit pessimistic. I had, was a bit skeptical and I had some reservations based on the reshoots, the delays, and Ezra Miller. But beyond all that, I'm happy to say this movie is the ultimate fan service. And sometimes when it comes to fan service, it feels a bit contrived and forced. In this story, it completely works. And if you're a fan of past or present DC comic book movies like I am, I grew up with the Batman movies, that was my life, they made me want to get nuts. And if you want to get nuts, you're definitely going to do so in this because Michael Keaton returns to form. And it wasn't just a cameo. No, no, no. He was a major player in this movie. And it's like my childhood was pouring out of my, it was oozing out of my pores into my popcorn. And it was like a weird different form of mutated butter that I just enjoyed eating every two seconds. Now let's get back to fan service. Sometimes in comic book movies, when you have fan service, it just feels forced and artificial and very contrived. But in the scope of this story, it all works. And if you're a fan of DC or the DC universe of live action films, this is like one big love letter. When it comes to the cameos in this film, it's completely batshit crazy, no pun intended. There are things I saw up in the big screen that I never thought I would see. Just nods and references. If you're a hardcore nerd of comic book movies and comic book lore, you're gonna enjoy some of the stuff that goes down in this film. Now, when it comes to the character of Flash, I'm not the biggest Flash fan. I'm more of a Batman guy, so that's why Michael Keaton got my juices flowing. And also, you get some Ben Affleck cameos and a lot of other stuff along the way. But I actually liked him this time as the Flash. And I think his performance, he got the time to shine and develop his character. He definitely had an arc and a likability. The opening scene alone, sort of made you root for Ezra Miller. Yeah, this movie has everything. It has babies falling out of windows. Ezra Miller putting some of those babies in a microwave. And yes, that actually did happen. And if you take that out of context, it sounds much worse than anything Ezra Miller's ever done in reality. Oh my God! But beyond all of that, the way that they explain time travel in this film actually makes sense. The metaphor is almost like time travel is like a big bowl of spaghetti, right? Sometimes it gets messy and intersects itself, and you, it, it, I liked it. It made sense. And coming from Batman, any time he says something, I'm going to believe him. So it just made sense coming from Michael Keaton. And the best way to describe the overall tone of The Flash, it sort of has a Back to the Future vibe at times, and even the score has like a Back to Future-esque vibe to it. You know, except, you know, it didn't have the power of love, but it had everything else in there. I would almost go so far as to say, Barry Allen, sort of like Marty McFly, and his Doc Brown is Batman. And if that doesn't entice you to see this movie, I don't know what else will. And to sum up the plot of the movie, it's sort of like a Flashpoint Paradox storyline, and there's a lot of liberties taken along the way. Essentially, Barry Allen, more or less, wants to bring his mom back and prove his father's innocence because he was accused of killing his mother. I've been there. Trust me. I understand. But when it comes to that, you know what? You know what would have been good if they'd done? If they just utilize Wonder Woman's lasso of truth in court and put it around Barry Allen's dad where he can't tell a lie and put him on the on the witness stand, wouldn't that be the ultimate truth? I, I don't know. Maybe a plot hole? I don't know. That's what I would have done. But man, oh man, this is the ultimate fan service. And if ever fan service made sense in the context of a story, it's a Flash movie. Just, I, I, this is a crowd-pleasing movie. The lady beside me was crying in her popcorn bucket. And that's not even a joke, not even a lie. I heard her s And I know it sounds like I'm freaking out about the movie. And it was a good time. I'm just pleasantly surprised by it. I feel like if DC were making comic book movies like this five or six years ago, they would still be in this current phase or this universe of DC rather than James Gunn taking the reins and rebooting everything because this works. This is what people wanted to see. A few nitpicks and criticisms. It does feel like a live action video game or animated movie at times, but in an odd way to stick up for that complaint, the tone of this movie, it works for that. So now here are my final flicking thoughts on The Flash. This film's almost bittersweet. It's exactly what DC needed, but this is like one of the final two remaining nails in the coffin before they reboot the entire universe and go the James Gunn direction, which I'm looking forward to. I can't wait to see it. But if this is a farewell or a love letter to all present and past live action DC comic book movies, I think it's a good farewell. So I'm going to give The Flash, I think I'm gonna give it a four? It's not. The Dark Knight. No, no, no. But in the context of what this film was trying to achieve and giving fans what they wanted to see and getting the tone right and giving you the ultimate live action Flash movie. So if it won me over, I hope it wins you over. Or at least you enjoy it. And if for nothing else, Michael Keaton got nuts.